Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me on today's interview. Now, you know that I love to interview successful entrepreneurs, and I love to get into their brains. Today, you're going to meet Diane Winger. Diane is a specialist in helping you deal with your entrepreneurial mindset because you can have all the strategy in the world, you can have the best business coach, you can have all the funnels laid out, but if you do not have this one thing that she's going to talk about today, you are going to feel very stuck. So let me tell you about Diane. She is a life and business coach for entrepreneurs, professionals, and creatives who identify with the strengths and struggles of ADHD traits, officially diagnosed or not. And I know a lot of creative women who struggle with these traits. So you're going to want to listen today if you feel like this could possibly be you. Now, during Diane's 20 year career as a licensed psychotherapist, she saw far too many brilliant and capable women struggling with distractibility, procrastination, perfectionism, and self-doubt. And it held them back. And they had no idea that the underlying issue was ADHD. And Diane had this same struggle herself. So after her own midlife diagnosis and learning everything that she could about how ADHD is expressed in women, she became on a mission. Her purpose became to help other creative, gifted, smart, entrepreneurial women achieve their true potential through radical self-acceptance by leveraging their unique strengths and creating ADHD-friendly businesses and lives. So I'll tell you how to get in touch with Diane at the end of our conversation, but I just want to say thank you for being here. I'm so excited to talk to you. I talk to so many women who are struggling with what you're an expert in. So thanks for being here, Diane. Yeah, actually, it's been amazing to me. You know, as a therapist, I met so many women who came with a diagnosis of anxiety, depression. They had troubles at work. They had troubles in their relationships. They had trouble with substances, shopping, alcohol, food, what have you. And they were getting help. And this is the the crazy part is they were getting help, but they didn't know it wasn't the right kind of help because they didn't know the underlying issue was actually ADHD. It's sad to me that we still know so little about this condition, particularly when you consider that upwards of 70% of entrepreneurs are said to have ADHD traits. Mm -hmm. It makes sense because of the way that the brain, the entrepreneurial brain needs to work. So why why don't you start by telling us who you serve and how you help people? Okay. I have been doing individual coaching with entrepreneurs for the last several years as I was pivoting out of being a therapist and into full time as a coach. And this fall for the first time, I'm going to be offering group coaching as well, because there are some women who really need you to take them by the hand one step at a time, and they really need that high touch individualized attention. But there are many other women that flourish in a group setting because without ever drawing attention to it, it completely dispels this notion that many of us have that we are the only one who has these struggles. It's just me, So right? yeah, it's, well, I think everybody sort of on the one hand likes the idea that we're a special snowflake <laughs> and on the other idea, nobody likes feeling like they are one of a kind because one, right? nobody can understand me. Nobody can help me. Nobody can get me. And that's just simply not true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I help so, entrepreneurs and creatives. Not all creatives are entrepreneurs or identify as entrepreneurs. Right. But I work with people who are either professionals. So let's say a physician in a private practice mm. or a creative or an entrepreneur. Usually they're two out of the three mm-hmm. uh, when they find their way to me. And oftentimes they feel very misunderstood and they misunderstand themselves because they know they're brilliant. They know they're brave and bold and smart and sassy. They just don't understand the thing that's holding them back. And lots of times they blame themselves. So there's a lot of shame involved. So those the, are my people. Yeah. So they'd be saying like, 
what's wrong with me? Why can't I just take action? I have all these ideas. Why can't I activate everybody else is doing and I'm still still spinning. Are those, the, are those the people who come to you? That's a lot of it. Um, what I say is oftentimes the, the issue is really what I call the triple threat or what I sometimes uh, refer to as the unholy trinity of procrastination, perfectionism, and people pleasing. Mm. And what I call people pleasing is difficulty charging for what they're worth, difficulty charging at all, difficulty setting boundaries with clients, difficulty knowing when enough is enough, mm -hmm. and just really owning their expertise and standing firm on it instead of constantly negotiating things. And I think so many women are prone to that anyway because of the way our gender is socialized that when you add ADHD to the mix, they are typically falling far short of their true potential. Yeah, so you're leading me right into my next question, which is why is your area of expertise so important that you are, you're in the world to do this work? Why do we need this? Well, I think like many people who are in helping professions, I identified these things in myself mm -hmm. and was able to overcome them. And once I did, I realized I am not the only one. And I am uniquely qualified to help people like <laughs> me because, you know, the truth is, as a therapist, I had been in and out of therapy for different reasons over, you know, different periods of time. I had been diagnosed. I had been treated by a handful of therapists with anxiety, with depression, with adjustment disorders. I have had ADHD since birth. Mm -hmm. It does not emerge. A lot of people say, oh, I started becoming ADHD at midlife. No, you didn't. If you are, you always have been. But if you're bright, you've had a lot of compensatory oh, coping, strategies yes. and coping. You found a lot of people call them workarounds. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you have your own unique way of doing things, you may not be able to explain why you do it that way, mm -hmm. but you know that you have to do it your way, which of course aligns perfectly with entrepreneurship because we can sort of craft a business that works for our brains. But most of these women there's a lot of shame and a lot of self-blame and so and oftentimes imposter complex as well so they won't challenge themselves to go to the level that they really want to and the level they can see their potential because they're afraid of failure they're afraid of disappointment and because one of our key struggles is being consistent yes. they think i may be able to get there but i won't be able to stay there my mission is to help these women unlock their potential mm -hmm. and overcome shame, self-doubt, and a lot of the bad habits, thinking habits and doing habits that we get into that truly hold us back. All the while, we may be blaming ourselves or even something else. It's the market. The market is saturated or there's too many people doing what I do or I don't have the right, I don't have the right marketing program or my family's too needy, whatever it is. But mm -hmm. Oftentimes, uh, the woman herself has come to believe that she may have flashes of brilliance. She may have moments of uniqueness, genius, if you will, mm -hmm. but she simply can't string enough of them together to stand up to the expectations and continually perform that way. So she'll hold herself back out of a sense of self-preservation sure. and just to keep her ego, you know, intact yeah. and not constantly getting beat up. But entrepreneurship is all about taking risks mm -hmm. and pivoting and learning as we go. So a lot of what I teach is skill set, but a huge amount is mindset. And with my therapy background, yeah. sometimes I have to remove trauma. Yes as well, because a lot of us have brought that into our careers as well. So I think getting through to even a handful of these women means that potentially thousands, if not millions of people benefit from them unlocking their full potential. Yeah, because they, they will have brought it to the world and we need their brilliance. I agree. Right. A question for you on this topic. Is there, an, is there a concern for this woman that, okay, maybe I could do it. Fine, Diane, I believe in myself. Okay. But is there a deep underlying limiting belief that, but it's going to be hard because everything has been so hard? Like in That's order for me to keep, a all good this, question. to keep all the plates spinning, I can maybe do it, but it's going to be real freaking hard. You know, that's a fantastic question. I appreciate you asking. I think, you know, when we're coming up in, whether it's public or private school, 
there usually isn't a lot of tolerance for kids going about things differently. Right? Right. You, you are a teacher, so you know this. That's right. Um, there's the way. There's the right way. And perhaps you could get to the same conclusion or even a better one. But if you're ADHD, you have to go about it your way. Well, that's usually shamed, blamed, right. shut down. Your parents are called, you know, maybe yeah. my, in particular, I had such a fast mind that after a while I would get to be able to anticipate what the teachers were going to ask. And as soon as they'd start to ask the class a question, I would raise my hand because the only way I could stay interested in what was happening is to be very engaged and involved. And I, I'm a lifelong learner. I love to learn. It was like a, a game show for me. I wanted to hit that button and be the first kid to have the answer. Not, not because I wanted to outshine anybody or embarrass anyone or make anyone feel bad. It was the only way that I could stay interested. Yeah. Well, I had teacher after teacher say, Diane, why don't you give someone else a chance? So I learned very early on my eagerness, my curiosity, mm -hmm my desire to learn, my fast mind mm -hmm. was not only not welcomed, it was a problem. Yeah. And that, that began many, many years of suppressing my gifts, holding myself back, believing I was both too much and, and not, not enough. enough. I wish... You know, I, I'm thinking of myself as a teacher. I haven't been a teacher in the traditional classroom sense for a long, long, long time. But I am bringing myself back to those moments. I can remember those kids who, mm -hmm. you know, th these were what they, this is what they were struggling with. And I wasn't trained to help them. And they were disruptive. And yes, I wanted them to give every, but what you're saying makes so much sense. I wish this was part of my education in my master's mm -hmm. degree program to help me understand, like, what's an alternative way I could help these kids or serve them in this very traditional education system that we have? This is so fascinating. You're right, because Jen, you know, you've got 30 something kids, one teacher, if you're lucky, one aide. Right, right. right. You have to exert control, consistency and conformity. But for someone with an ADHD brain, especially someone who is very intelligent and has an ADHD brain, the worst thing they can do is conform to the norm because yeah. the only way they can do that is to suppress what's unique and right. special and gifted about them. Well, after you go through a lifetime of pushing that down, holding back and thinking there's something wrong with the way you are, the way you think, the way you feel, the way you do, it's not surprising at all when you consider how many people gravitate to entrepreneurship because they have internalized the belief, I don't belong, I don't fit. One of these things is not like the others, That's as they right. used to say in Sesame Street. That's right. And so you better go your own way because it's not that you are so brilliant that what you have to offer just can't be done in a traditional setting. You don't think you can succeed there. So in yeah. a way, you're sort of forced to carve your own path. And thank goodness so many of us do because without all the constraints and the conformity required in the traditional workplace, we can begin to explore what's really magical from our own minds. You know, my husband is also a business coach and he's been in the business world a lot longer than I have. And he's worked, he works with everybody from high school and college students all the way up to people who are just scaling their business and tweaking mm. everything. So he's seen a lot of different entrepreneurs and he always says the best entrepreneurs are the worst students. And now I'm really understanding why. They're the seed we don't follow directions. Right? We exactly. we don't follow directions. Exactly. We talk. We interrupt the teacher like I'm interrupting you right now. <laughs> we we talk. We talk over other people because our brains are moving so fast. Yeah, we already know the answer before you fully form the question, mm -hmm. and we're just eager to go to the next thing and the next thing and next thing. Well, sure. certain types of entrepreneurship, serial entrepreneurs in particular. Yes, yes. I can tell you without any question, almost a hundred percent ADHD because. Once we have achieved our goal, maintaining it it's is boring. I would say for me, boredom is a life-threatening condition. Yes, yes. So as soon as I've checked the box, what's new, what's, what's next, next? What, where do we go? And if you yes. can create something that allows you to take advantage of that, mm -hmm. you couldn't be happier. Well, let's talk about the tools and strategies that you use with your clients because you clearly, so one of my favorite things, I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. 
is for my clients, if, when they come to me, they are generally women in the middle of their business. They want to get to the next level, but they don't understand their messaging. They really struggle with their mm. messaging. And so the number one thing we always work on is who is in your audience? What asses are in the seats yeah. you are speaking, right? You know your audience so incredibly well and in a full 360 range. It's so clear for me mm -hmm, from just our, mm -hmm. our short conversation already, which I love talking about that. So given how well you know your people, how do you help them? What kind of tools do you give them? What strategies do you have? Well, as it turns out, many women with ADHD and then the men as well, because they've internalized so many negative messages mm -hmm. about themselves, right. because they hold themselves back unconsciously out of a fear of doing the wrong thing. Or some of them have become so, have so much of a chip on their shoulder and so unwilling to get any kind of feedback because frankly, they can expect nothing but Critical. shit they don't want to hear. So those people are hard to help because I say, girl, you got a chip on your shoulder. Now, oftentimes I know them better than they know themselves. Yeah. I would say I have an unfair advantage, not only because I was a psychotherapist, but I was so compelled to figure myself out and I just wouldn't stop trying. Like something isn't adding up here. How can I be so bright? I could go into a room and deliver a speech to a thousand people with no notes and very little preparation and then walk out of the elevator and spend 30 minutes searching for my car. So there's a lot of disconnect between who you can be in one setting and who you are in another. Between, you know, everyone has gifts and everyone has challenges, but they seem to be very dramatic for the person with ADHD. So for my clients, I would say one of the most important things that I offer them the first thing I offer them, and I always do a consultation first because I will not accept anyone as a client unless they meet two criteria. There has to be a good fit and they have to be coachable. Mm -hmm. And not everybody is, even if they want to be. You know this yourself, uh -huh. right? They're not, if they're not coachable. And they may not be coachable because they actually need a therapist yes. first. Yes, yes, yes. Or instead, or because they have had so much negative feedback early in life and, and probably ongoing that even though they're stuck and they know they need help, they deflect it in, in every way possible. Like you okay, might so offer they something some and healing. they Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they need to see themselves better and they also need to relax a little bit and recognize the only way I can help you is if you are willing to trust me. <laughs> Now, I'm not asking you to trust me. I'm inviting you to. And if at any moment you choose to revoke that, I'll feel it before you do. One of my <laughs> gifts happens to be intuition. Every woman with ADHD has gifts. One of mine happens to be intuition. I grew up in a, I'm adopted and I grew up in a very, very abusive home. So I am very fortunate that I had such powerful intuition because it's what kept me safe mm. and made me a survivor. Mm -hmm. So this is an area that I bring to my clients because they need to have first self-awareness, second self-acceptance, mm -hmm. and then we can really start making progress. One of the things that informs my work um, is a book that was published about 15 years ago called The Big Leap Oh yes, by Gay Hendricks. Life, and I'm able to changer. go- Oh, I'm able to go very, very deep with that work because oftentimes there's someone in the family that if you let yourself really shine, you will sh feel that you're shaming them in some way. Or maybe you had a mother who always told you that she gave up everything to have you. So you might hold yourself back from fully expressing your gifts because you'll somehow shame her choice to be a homemaker. I mean, all of that stuff. And that's kind of in addition to the ADHD, but often goes hand in hand because let's face it, if you have ADHD, you already feel like an outlier. You already feel like a misfit. You already know you can't do things the way everyone else does them. Right. So how, what you make that mean, and here's because you do mindset work as well, what you make that mean mm -hmm. requires stripping the story off the facts so that you can create a new story in its place 
and then practice that new story so that your brain recognizes, oh, okay, so this is what we're thinking now, creates new neural pathways. Mm -hmm. And in time, that will be what comes to mind automatically instead of the same old tapes that you've been playing for God knows how many years. So I practice mindfulness. I have been a meditator for about 15 years. So I insist that my clients do several things. And these are all skills and strategies, but they, they're they just sort of woven into the way I work. Mm-hmm. One of them is everything we do together has to be approached mindfully. Mindfulness isn't mysterious. It's open, curious, non-judgmental. Mm-hmm. Everything needs to be approached with play and as an adventure. If you tell me, oh, I'm not doing that, I've already tried it, you tried it at a different place, a different time with a different guide, let's try it again. And I also think self-care in the form of healthy food, some kind of exercise, hydration, adequate Mm -hmm. sleep. Entrepreneurs are the worst. We have the worst bosses. We have the worst bosses. Of course. Yes. (laughs) Right. Yeah. With the worst bosses. And and oftentimes it's our self-care that is one of the the first things. First thing to go, relationships is close behind. But unless you put caring for yourself first, it's inevitable you're going to get stuck. I think you'd agree. Oh, 100%. Yes. Yes. Um, This, but it goes right along with everything you said at the beginning the three P's. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're you're dealing with people pleasing, uh, you're never going to put yourself first because it doesn't really matter what you think of yourself. It matters much more what everybody else thinks of you. So this all is very iterative, the, what, mm-hmm. what you're talking about. So it makes, it makes a lot of sense. I, 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 I freaking love how, much, how well you know your, uh, your ideal client and your, the people that you want to work with. So I'm just curious if you were working, if you had to give advice to women entrepreneurs who really want to grow their business what is the number one piece of advice you would give to a woman who's like, who, who in your description really is identifying herself and how you're talking? Well, the first thing I would do is ask why she's an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, you know, I think, I, I don't believe that the historical stuff is nearly as important as I did when I was a therapist. I think one of the faults of therapy is you spend too much time looking in the rear the view past, mirror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the past is important because it informs how we got to where we are. It informs a lot of our mindset issues, a lot of our limiting beliefs, a lot of our blocks, a lot of the unconscious stuff. Because, you know, most coaches are focusing so much on the conscious things you can do as though there isn't anything about the human being that might have another agenda. I represent the other agenda. So I think that, you know, because, and I've wasted, oh, many thousands of dollars. And the reason why it was a waste is because I was only getting the strategy. Mm-hmm. I wasn't getting the mindset. And I think that it's, it's really heartbreaking. I mean, you and I both know countless female entrepreneurs who are hiring the best people, yeah. spending good money, making the effort. And when something isn't working, oftentimes they're told, you're not committed, right. double down, take massive action. So they work twice as hard. And if you have ADHD and don't know it, or maybe suspect you do, but you don't want to get diagnosed because that would just bring a sense of stigma and shame, mm. you double down. That's what we always did. And you work twice as hard and it still doesn't work. Will you see people around you if you're in a group coaching program passing you by, passing you by, and you think, I'm just as smart as her. I work just as hard as him. But it why back, aren't I getting there? But it brings you, and this, what you're describing right here, brings you back to that moment in high school when you're like, everybody else is going, phew, 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 pet, right, like racing past you. And you know, I'm smarter than these people. I'm working yes. twice as hard as these people. My ideas are more brilliant than these people. Why am I so stuck? It, it, so it must just be so debilitating for a woman, the kind of woman you're describing, to feel like I'm working hard. What is the problem, right? Mm-hmm. Like how, how much it must bring them right back to that moment of the original shame. And that's usually, you know, I don't do therapy anymore. And I actually just had a woman this week beg me to, to work with her. And I said, you're not ready. You need to get therapy and you probably need medication because she had been at it for so long that she had worked herself 
into a downward spiral and I would say was not only ADHD, but clinically depressed, Mm -hmm. that's a terrible place to Mm -hmm. apply any kind of business coaching. And also even mindset coaching. I mean, when a person's deep into depression, everything is filtered through that negative mindset biologically. And so they're not able to apply it to themselves. And so I'm, I'm ethical enough to say, I won't take your money. You need to deal with this first. This is not a rejection. This is a gift. Yeah. Because I could take your money. You will not have a good outcome. You won't blame me. You'll blame you. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to be a party to that. Mm-hmm. So I think that... Um, now, here's, here's something else, Jen. I don't think every woman who procrastinates has ADHD. Mm-hmm. I don't think every woman who's a perfectionist has ADHD. And I certainly don't think every woman who is a people pleaser or has trouble with boundaries with clients has ADHD. However, it has been said by very well-known people in the field that probably only 15% of the women who do have ADHD are aware of it. Hmm. So what are some of the indicators? How do we become aware? How do we? Well, I think uh, as it turns out, the fastest growing group of adults being identified, I prefer the term identified instead of diagnosed. Okay. Because the truth is a diagnosis is only meaningful if you intend to get treatment in the form of medication. And many women do not make that choice. But knowing I have an ADHD brain is Mm. very useful information. So they would be looking to, if 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 the problems are with impulsivity, distractibility, difficulty focusing, difficulty meeting deadlines, always being late, being disorganized, having brilliant ideas and then completely forgetting about them or having so many brilliant ideas, you can't figure out which one to pick. So you just spin in circles. A very significant percentage of people will have a great idea, go off and running with it and start to get some traction and then inexplicably just fizzle out. And Mm -hmm. and other people will say to them, including other coaches, well, you know, maybe you're just scared or maybe you're self-sabotaging or it must be imposter complex. And those, those things may fit somewhat. Mm -hmm. So the woman will say, well, then I just need to be more positive and I just need to be more accountable. But the problem with ADHD is biological, not characterological. The problem is that we get just as excited as anyone, but it's a dopamine delivery system issue. So whatever gets you a dose of dopamine gets you off and running, but the dopamine doesn't keep on flowing, so you fizzle out. Now, there are very helpful strategic ways to get yourself back into the dopamine download, but if you don't know that, you are just going to think, it's me. And I've sadly seen many women leave entrepreneurship and go get a J-O-B, not because they want one, but because they think, I tried, I failed, I can't do it. I think the entrepreneurial life suits us extremely well, but you have to know who you are, you have to know how you are, and most importantly, you have to know how to work with how you are. So I just want to get to as many women as I can because I think there are thousands of us out there quietly suffering or not so quietly suffering, and we don't even know the reason. Yeah, 100%. This resonates with me so much, not for myself, but for the client's that I work with. This is such an education for me also. Hmm. Oh my gosh, there's so many things that I want to ask you. So how do people, so let's, let's, let's get right to the thing. If, if somebody's listening to this and they, your reson, what your message is, is resonant with them, how can they work with you? They can work with me individually. I, I don't do really long-term work anymore. I work with people in a very focused way for 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. So either individually or as part of a group, I'm also developing an ongoing mastermind because Mm -hmm. you can make a lot of progress in 12 weeks. And after 12 weeks, especially when you're one-on-one, some people are like, I get it. I understand. I know what I need to do. And they, they're making the changes in their life. And, you know, they just need a check in every now and then from there. And other people are like, oh my gosh, I feel like I have decades of you know, I, I need to overcome, like I, I, I was held back for so long, now I just want to keep on going. So I realized that I need to create different levels. Yeah. Um, I, I just recognized there were so many women who didn't know, so it's kind of entry level. But a lot of the women that have worked with me for three months are like, what's the next step? 
So this fall, I'm going to be creating both an entry level, which is called Ignition, mm -hmm. and a advanced level, which is called Accelerate Groups. Because right. I think the power of groups, once you've gotten over your shame, once you understand who you are and what you need yeah. to do to actually be part of a cohort and go, oh my God, I don't feel alone anymore. Well, yeah. you know, entrepreneurship is such a lonely path for most of us anyway, it is. that that is powerful. That is amazing. I love this. When I talk to people and I ask them, what is it? Why do you want to start a business? I hear I want, you know, they want to make money, but they mostly want creative freedom and time yes. freedom. Yes. And it makes so much sense that especially if you're coming with an ADHD brain, uh, that, that freedom is the one thing that you have never had because of all of the the institutions that you've been cut or the, the square holes that you've been trying to get mm -hmm. shoved into and you're around peg, right? So this makes, I would say I spill, I spill out over the edges of any box. Anyone <laughs> tries to shove me in. I poke <laughs> holes in the side, you know, like you know, kids like to play with a, with a refrigerator box. When yeah, the family gets, yeah. I have to, you know, decorate it, poke holes and all that. And, and you're right. It is the creative freedom. And it's also the freedom to, change your mind, mm -hmm. change your direction, right. change your offerings. I find that most of us quit jobs every couple of years throughout our me. career. Yeah. And, and we're always thought that we were flakes because most people fear change. Mm -hmm. We not only crave, crave it. it, we need it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and for the record, I think most entrepreneurs would identify with a lot of these traits, but you don't actually have what would qualify you for a diagnosis of ADHD mm -hmm. unless these traits are coupled with impairment. Yeah. And if it's holding you back, that's the whole thing. Right? Precisely. Like so if you, you have back. the, yeah, if you have, there's a lot of very successful entrepreneurs who sure. have these traits and sure. they are by no means held back. Why? Because they know who they are and they're not trying to be anything else. I love it. Well, Diane, I want to appreciate, I want to tell you how much I appreciate this education for myself and this education for my audience. I think that your message is going to be so resonant with so many women. A friend of mine just recently figured this out for herself and she's mm -hmm. now listening to every podcast about it. And she keeps sending me texts like you need to know this for your audience. So I love that we are having this conversation. Thank you so much. And I will be. Well, sure. you have to tell her about mine. I just oh, launched I a podcast a couple of months ago. So, I will. And, I, and it doesn't have ADHD in the title because I'm specifically trying to help the women who don't know yet. Yes. Yes. So I, I will link to your podcast and I will link to your website so that people can seek you out. And where can we follow you on the socials? I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay. Um, you can either look for Diane Wingert or Coach Diane Wingert or Diane Wingert Coaching, but you got to spell Diane in a funky way because that's actually how it's uh, spelled. Of course. <laughs> D-I-A-N. I, I can't take credit for that. D-I-A-N-N. -N, and mm -hmm. Orange is my color, so wherever you find me, you'll find a lot of orange. Okay, including the clock behind you, right? Uh, yes, and the and the uh, <laughs> the lamp here, and the sticker on the wall, and I could give you the tour, but let's not. <laughs> I appreciate you so much, Diane. Thank you so much today. This was delightful, Jen. Thanks. Bye, bye, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. And tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.